Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is very disturbing. Um, I'm only going to be sharing a brief uh, clip of this information here on Israeli News Live. Um, and then either tonight or tomorrow, one, I'm going to go much deeper into depth on this very same subject. Uh, over on Israeli News Live, iConnectFX.com. And the reason being is because the information is sensitive, and uh, I'm not just real sure how um, YouTube is going to react to this information that I'm going to share with you. Uh, but in, in the gist of this, I want to um, take you over to uh, the Ariel... Uh, Sadak, and in his uh, uh, kosher Torah school, he is teaching about, uh, and I've mentioned him before, he's been on the History Channel a number of times there, he's also been on the Skinwalker Ranch uh, as well, where he brought an orb in using a Kabbalistic uh, um, type of uh, things to bring in this orb. Uh, he speaks about that on this video right here, but what really concerns me is, is he talks about the reptilians and talks about the reptilians as being uh, the friends of God, so to speak, and that they're on our side. I've said this before about him speaking about these things, and uh, the History Channel clip that I would use would speak a little bit about it, but... Uh, here he goes into it a lot deeper. Now, he just released this video a few days ago. And, you know, there, of course, there's some things that I would agree with him on that he speaks about, but definitely not when you're taking the most evil entities there are and likening them unto uh, the holy of holy servants of God. Um but we're going to go into that. Like I said, I'm going to go much deeper into that in a separate message. But I'm going to play this clip right here for you, about two or three minutes. And then uh, I want to share some thoughts with you on it here. Uh, and then again, like I said, tomorrow I'll try to go deeper into that with you. By the way, don't forget too, on, on our YouTube channel, uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, Resubscribed if you're not uh, okay here on uh, just as a reminder here don't forget to subscribe or resubscribe here to Danun Institute here on our uh, excuse me Israeli News Live on our channel here on YouTube there we're at 398,000 there we've been stuck there for a long period of time in fact when I asked you guys about this the other day uh, if you could help us out with that. I want to just kind of share with you here. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Uh, um, hmm, let's see. I forget how you look that up there on the channel there, but let me just go to manage videos. Maybe I can find it through that direction there. Uh, your, your, here we go, dashboard. Uh, we've only moved about... Uh, uh, says 163 people in the last 23 days. Uh, in reality, we only moved, uh, I want to say about 70 people is, or, or something to that effect there is all we have moved uh, at all. And it used to be Israeli News Live would grow over 1,000 people a week. And so they, they're shadow banning the channel. They're trying to, to stop, stagnate the channel. So we are just asking you to resubscribe or you're not subscribed subscribe uh, so that we can get over that hump there anyway let's listen in here to Ariel uh, Sadak here uh, and I think he'll mention his book in here I forget the title of that there but uh, a very interesting man there and very very eye-opening what he says about the reptilians listen he who they uh, entertained at Roswell gave them full debriefing telepathically. Well, we still communicate telepathically with all of these other entities. There was a race of highly evolved reptilians who matured and evolved on Earth and have since ascended. And they presently serve Hashem, God, 
and they are reptilian entities. Maybe evolved dinosaurs. Who knows? I don't think the dinosaurs are so 65 million years ago. You notice he said they serve Hashem, and then he said God. An evolved reptilian race. They are referred to as, in the Sefi Tzirah, they're referred to as the Tali, T-E-L-I. I write all about this. He said they're referred to in the Seven Sirah uh, as the Tali. Uh, he spells it T-E-L-I. You can also spell it T-A-L-I uh, or T-H-A-L-I. Uh, there's se several different ways as far as in English you can spell this. And uh, I will share that with you a little bit about that as well. Um, but let's listen on, because like I said, he's bringing out the reptilians as a godly angel force. Listen on. They rule in this universe like a king on his throne. They're the reptilians. We know who they are. And they know us. We know them by different names. The book of Daniel calls them the Irin, the watchers. The book of Isaiah refers to them as the Seraphim. Now, the Seraphim are the ones who are in the palace of God saying Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. So they're pretty high up there in the order. But people say, oh, the word Seraphim, that means burning ones. And I feel like taking the head and giving somebody a whack on the side of the head saying, it's what you get for not understanding Hebrew correctly. The Hebrew word for burning is so ref. And if they were burning ones, then they would be called so rephim. But it's very clear from the book of Isaiah that they're not called that. They're called seraphim. And the word seraph, that's exactly what Moses was told by God to put on the staff back in the numbers. Clearly a reptilian. These are and he says clearly a reptilian. Now, some of what he says is very true. And uh, let me just take and share with you a couple of things here. This here is in the Sefer uh, Yitzra, and this is where it talks about the Tali. And, uh, and so it says here by, let's see. Um, Dwelling in eternity, holy be his name, traced out, carved three fathers and their posterity, seven conquerors and their host uh, and 12 diagonal boundaries the proof of this is revealed by the universe the year and the soul which the rule 10 3 7 and 12 over them rule the tali the dragon the will and the heart all right so this is in uh rabbinic literature the sefer sefer uh yesra is where that's found out there in chapter one uh, there's other places this is also referred to. Uh, I'll go deeper into that when I go into this video again. But uh, he mentioned the book of Daniel, the, the watcher, the ear, right there, whereas the king saw the watcher and holy one coming down from heaven and saying, uh, hew down in, uh, the tree and destroy it. Nevertheless, leave the, the stump of the roots there of the earth, even in the, the band of iron. Now, you have to understand, I don't agree with him in all of his analogies of who the Tali or the uh, reptilians are biblically. But when you get into the book of Numbers, uh, this here clearly identifies uh, the Seraphim as reptilian. Uh, because you have it right here, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Okay, it says here, Veshalach Yehovah, okay, and he sent Jehovah Be'am uh, in the people, et uh, Hanachashim, serpents, Hasafim, flying serpents or winged serpents. All right, that's what he sends to them. And uh, you go into verse 7, and the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord. And against you pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us and Moses prayed for the people now I've actually done I've spoke about this one before because I thought it was very important uh, they didn't ask Moses to take away the serpents plural as we have in the English language here but they actually specifically are asking to take away 
uh, from ruling over them the serpent, uh, the serpent from the Garden of Eden. And we see that in the Hebrew because it says uh, here, uh, in Hebrew there, that uh, they said to, uh, they're speaking to Moses, Elio, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, pray unto the Lord that he take away, okay, El Yehovah, Vea said, Me aleinu, from over us, et chanachash, okay, chanachash. It doesn't say, as you have here, the serpents, chanachashim, the flying serpents that came in among the people, but now they're asking that he take away the uh, yaser, okay, the yaser me'aleinu. All right, let me just show you something here. Uh, I don't know if I can, let me see. This is in the book of Numbers, I believe Numbers 21. Um, I'm going to see, I'm not sure if it's going to show me or not, it doesn't always do that, uh, but let's, let's just try it in the Bible here and see if they actually, uh, what was that, 21 I believe it was, okay, the fire said, the, the people, pray unto the Lord, take away the serpents from, uh, from us, okay, mene, uh, okay, from over us is literally what that is saying. Take away uh, sword. Okay, the taking away decline. Uh, I was thinking what I'm thinking of, and let me just see if I can pull this up so you can see something here. We'll go with the word prince. And uh, let's see here. Fifty-three. Okay, wait a minute. I was trying to see. I know the word prince is also the word sar, but it's spelt with a sheen, it looks like. I was thinking it had a samic in front of it. But, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's spelled differently. Uh, it sound pronounced the same, but I just kind of just wanted to check to see if that was the case there. But nonetheless, they're asking for the serpent to be taking, taken away from ruling over them. And the part about the serpent is important, like I said, because here in highlighted in yellow, you have serpents, plural, nechashim, chanechashim. But they wanted the serpent taken from ruling over them. And if you look in Genesis, uh, when we look at the at the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, uh, that word arum by the word is naked. Um, the, the serpent was, was naked. In other words, he's in plain view, uh, so to speak. And it is, again, Chanachash, uh, Chanachash. Okay, the hay in front of it, right there, right? See, Chanachash. It's the serpent. So when you go back to the book of Numbers, they wanted the serpent, which would tell us it's the same serpent of the Garden of Eden from ruling over them. The Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent, okay, and, and set it upon a pole. Now, he doesn't even use the word serpent in that particular uh, context of the sentence there when he says, El Moshe, O Se Lecha Serif, he just used the, the same word for the seraphim or the, or, the, or the flying ones there. The serif is the word for flying. And to make, uh, you know, they put on there the fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, but it's actually for the flying ones there. We know it's a serpent because in verse 9, Moses made a serpent of brass. Nachash, nachashot, uh, which is the word for brass, same just like the word serpent. Um, it's actually the same word, it just uh, gives it with a tav at the end for a pluralization. So he made this, uh, or feminization you might say, he made this serpent of a brass pole. So we know that the saraf was a winged serpent that was placed on that pole. And like I said, they were asking Moses to take away the serpent. Uh, now, if you listen on into this video with uh, uh, Ariel Tzedak, he actually uh, speaks about um, uh, the serpent in the garden as well. And he is saying that that, that was basically one of the reptilians that kind of went rogue on them. 
Uh, but he also talks about how in the garden that Eve uh, was not afraid. Uh, you know, he talks about that the serpent was erect, it had arms and legs, etc., looked more human. Uh, and, and I could agree with that because, you know, if he's cursed to go on his belly all the days of his life, then he had to have not been on his belly to start with. So there is some truth to that statement there. But the mere fact that he is an evil entity uh, trying to get the people to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, which ends up representing the law, you know, you know, and, and so it has good and evil both about it. It, it. it has both negative and positive consequences in the law itself. So, but at any rate there, I wanted to share those things with you just in brief right here this morning, uh, because this is what I call the smoking gun, you know, where a rabbi actually tells you the reptilian entities uh, are, are on their side. And I have to say there because this is the elite rabbis that are that are uh, propagating this type of information. I'm sure most Jewish people would probably their hearts would stop to even think so, of something like that. Let's listen a little bit more. Entities. And they're the good guys. But well, no, 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 no but that. Let me back up for One you because he tells you they're the, the good guys. Previous where it's Seraph. That's exactly what Moses was told by God to put on a staff back in the numbers. Clearly a reptilian. These are reptilian entities. And they're the good guys. But, well, no, 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 no but back. One of the previous epoch stole the image or might have been a they had Tilly. And that's the story of Adam and Eve, and you know, with the reptilian in the garden. And remember the whole story of that snake? Let me ask you guys something. When was the last time you had a conversation with a snake? The one thing I love... I'll, I'll just include the link in the description for you here so you can listen to this for yourself. But it is very disturbing um, when you think of uh, this, especially putting the... Uh, the reptilian uh, entities in a good light there. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, pro it's a problem. Uh, and it's a problem for me especially. And it, But you know, too, uh, when I was looking at different images, you know, I actually, I come across this one here. Uh, it's because I was looking for winged reptilians. Uh, and it appears to be there may be some kind of statue that exists. I don't know if it does or does not have no clue really, but I was looking to see if there's anything like that. I mean, there's all kinds of statues to begin with of reptilians. And uh, and so, you know, there's even one that looks like what they had that cartoon or whatever they had called Ninja Turtles, but it's actually more like reptilians in armor suits. Uh, and again, I don't know the source of that information, where it comes from, it's a Chinese uh, source there. And uh, so it just kind of makes you wonder uh, about that. But, you know, this is what's really important is to separate, um, I guess you would say, fiction from fantasy, so to speak. And uh, I'd like to also show with you here, uh, when it comes to the dragons and the Vaticans, and the Vatican, I have a tremendous number of photos of that, I just want to see. Yeah, here we go. You always see in the Vatican, and and like I said, I have massive number of photos myself that I've taken of at the Vatican, and these are actual photographs from there. And it's a winged dragon uh, that you see quite frequently everywhere in uh, in Rome. And I've always wondered why they do that, right? And, uh, and there's even this one image I came across when I was putting all this together where they show Jesus uh, as a uh, reptilian, being, the skin being stripped or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is such satanic type of worship is what it is. And it's almost as if between the Vatican and these uh, high-ranking Orthodox rabbis, uh, they glorify the serpent and the dragon. And, you know, 
it is disturbing and, and, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of a lot of this so I could really try to help uh, bring some more light to what's going on. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel there and, and, and really and truly, if what we do here is a blessing for you, you have our website above my head there, israelinewslive.org. It'll be in the description below. Uh, you can click to donate online, especially with us being away from home right now. Uh, it, it's far more helpful if you can, but our mailing address, my name is Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. I'll actually be going home here uh, into this week here for a couple of weeks, uh, so we thank you for your support. It is des uh, de definitely needed, and, um, and so I can't begin to thank you enough, and God bless you uh, for listening and praying for our family. Good evening.